This council developed a creed that will influence the Christian church for over 1,600 years. Hi, and welcome to Ratio Christi TV, and today we'll be talking about the Council of Nicaea. At the Council of Nicaea, one of the primary issues they dealt with can be traced back to a dispute between the Bishop of Alexandria and one of the priests within the clergy around 318. Alexander, the Bishop of Alexandria, heard that Arius had been teaching a questionable doctrine concerning Jesus' relation to the Father. To understand what Arius was teaching, Alexander decided to focus the topic of his next theological discussion with the clergy on the unity of the Holy Trinity. During the meeting, Arius' views were revealed, but the primary one focused on whether or not Jesus was co-eternal with God. Arius argued that Jesus was made before all other things, and was used by God to create the physical world. This made Jesus into something that was neither divine nor human, but a unique creation of God. Arius argued that at one point before time, Jesus did not exist. Alexander tried to explain why this view would severely harm the core doctrines of Christianity, but Arius refused to listen. To resolve the problem, Alexander called together a council of a hundred bishops, which ended with Alexander demanding Arius to sign a confession of orthodoxy that rejected Arius' views. Arius refused to sign and was then excommunicated. Arius left Alexandria and traveled to Nicomedia, where his friend Eusebius of Nicomedia was the bishop. During the next four years, two other councils were held in Bithynia and Palestine by Eusebius of Nicomedia and Eusebius of Caesarea, which resulted with Arius being vindicated. After the two council meetings, the dispute continued to grow as letters were sent back and forth between the supporters of Arius and Alexander. This continued until 322, when Licinius, the Roman Emperor of the East, embarked a ban on the meetings between the bishops because of the growing dispute. To understand what happened next, we need to go back to 306, when Constantine started his rise to power. Rome was ruled by four united emperors. When Constantius, one of the four emperors, died in 306, his territory was given to his son Constantine. This caused problems with the other three emperors, which resulted in a seven-year civil war. By the end of the civil war in 313, Rome was ruled by only two emperors, Constantine in the west and Licinius in the east. During the civil war, Constantine believed he had seen visions from God declaring that he would win against his enemies. When the vision started, Constantine was not sure if they were from the God of his father or from the Christian God. But as the war progressed, he started to believe that they were from the Christian God. However, his conversion to Christianity was not immediate, but happened over an extended period of time within his own mind. In 312, Constantine chose to change his symbol before the battle with Maxinius at the Mulvian Bridge. He claimed that the symbol was provided by the highest god. Though the symbol was not directly linked with Christianity that day, it would later become Constantine's personal standard and a symbol of imperial Christianity. After Constantine won the battle at the Mulvian Bridge, Constantine and Licinius made an alliance. This alliance was cemented with the marriage between Licinius and Constantine's oldest half-sister, Constantia, who was also a Christian. Licinius also adopted Constantine's stance on religious tolerance into the Eastern Roman Empire. When Constantine entered into his new territory in the West, he needed to find a way to integrate the members of the old regime into his own. Constantine also wanted to integrate the Christian Church into the Western government by giving the bishops of the Church civic authority. He believed that the Christian Church could help stabilize the war-torn empire. However, during this time, his relations with Licinius began to deteriorate, which started another civil war. It was during the war between Constantine and Licinius that Licinius banned the meetings of the bishops in the East. On December 16, 324, Licinius lost the civil war and surrendered to Constantine. Constantine then became the sole emperor of Rome and needed to find a way to integrate the Eastern Empire with the West. As Constantine combined the Eastern Empire with his own, he found problems within the Christian churches in the East that needed to be resolved so that it can help stabilize the Roman Empire. One of the major problems was the dispute between Arius and Alexander. Constantine decided to write a letter to Alexander and Arius, demanding that they stop the quarreling. He reminded them that they shared a common faith and that their bickering should remain an intellectual discussion and not be made a cause to split the church. One attempt to resolve the problem between Arius and Alexander was a council of 59 bishops that was held in Antioch in early 324. Neither Alexander nor Arius attended the meeting. However, all but three of the bishops signed a statement of faith against Arius. Unfortunately, this did not resolve the problem. Constantine decided to call a council in Nicaea to resolve the issues in the Eastern churches. 
Though Constantine provided the funds for the meeting, he participated only as an interested spectator. However, he wanted them to solve their problems and, if necessary, make compromises. Though all the bishops of the Roman Empire were invited, many of the bishops in the West did not see what all the fuss was about and did not want to travel to the East. In all, there were 250 to 300 bishops that attended the Council of Nicaea, in which the majority was from the East. Nevertheless, representatives for and against Ares were present during the council that met in May of 325 and did not end until July of that year. Ares was not allowed to sit in on the council since he was a priest and only bishops were permitted in. But Eusebius of Nicomedia spoke for him. Unfortunately, we have no documents detailing what happened during the two months that the council met. But we do have a few letters written by Eusebius of Caesarea and Constantine to the various churches in the Roman Empire about the decisions of the council. Eusebius and Constantine stated that Arius's views were carefully examined and was rejected by all but two of the approximately 300 bishops. Eusebius then wrote a creed that will be later known as the Nicene Creed, which explained the theological conclusions of the council. It was signed by all of the bishops but the two that rejected it. The two bishops in Arius were then excommunicated from the church and sent into exile. Two years after the council, Constantine wanted to end the conflict completely by asking Arius to come back from exile. At a council held in either Nicaea or Nicomedia in 327, Arius made a confession of faith which did not explicitly reject his views or accept the creed written two years earlier. Constantine then requested that Alexander reinstate Arius back into the church in Alexandria, but Alexander died in 328 before giving a response. Despite Constantine's efforts, the Council of Nicaea did not solve all the problems within the Eastern Church. After Arius returned from exile, his views spread again in the Roman Empire, and Alexander's successor, Athanasius, became one of the primary opponents of what will be called Arianism. The Council did, however, produce the Nicene Creed. This is the document that explained the theological conclusions of the Council of Nicaea. This creed was expanded on in the First Council of Constantinople in 381. Since the Nicene Creed was written in 325, it has continued to influence the Christian Church worldwide.